going into this, uh, the tackling the digital human work, uh, both for Tarkin and Leia, uh, we were very excited about it. We knew it was going to be hard, and it was every bit as hard as we thought it was going to be. Uh, so that wasn't a surprise, uh, uh, but I, we all really enjoyed doing that. It was a lot of a lot of fun. Um, I think, you know, there, there weren't a huge number of surprises on the show. You know, we kind of, um, even the show, show grew quite dramatically. Uh, I think uh, in our final approved budget that got submitted to the studio, uh, I think the box we had uh, would buy us about 800 visual effect shots. And I, I thought that was extremely unlikely that the cut was going to come in with 800 effect shots. You know, this feels like this is an 1,100-shot show at a minimum. And indeed, as, uh, as the edit really came together and, um, and we were incorporating everybody's good ideas, it, uh, uh, it ended up being 1,700 shots in the end. And um, one of the advantages of, of being in at the exec producer level is I had insight into a lot of the discussions that were going into what was happening with this scene and, you know, we think we should probably do a pickup shoot to, to rework this part and we're going to drop this whole story thread so we need to shoot some new material to cover this stuff that doesn't make sense now that we've dropped this whole thread out. So I kind of knew those things were coming and why we were doing that and that this part of the scene wasn't going to change so it was safe in this scene. This part of the scene, yeah, we're, we're going to be doing work there so let's not... Uh, Let's not get too too far with the visual effects. So um, we didn't waste a lot um, in terms of, you know, there's not a lot of finished effects work that isn't in the movie. Um, I knew enough to uh, direct effort to the stuff that was stable and knowing that, um, all right, this is all wet paint, so let's not, let's get the assets ready, but let's not uh, do shot work yet on this part. Well, it starts off with, uh, with Gareth, uh, Stating, you know, what he wanted for the the tone of those those uh, sequences. The first one we see the um, hit on Jetta, um, and even though our heroes are escaping uh, from this destruction, he didn't want this to be a oh wow exciting roller coaster kind of dodging rocks uh, um, kind of thing. He said no, this should be this should be nightmarish. This should be of ap apocalyptic and you know, nightmare material, and um, you know, when they, our heroes escape that, it's not, Yahoo! It's uh, in a sort of a somber moment um, because, you know, it was, I destroyed a whole population there. Um, so um, from there it was, um, you certainly were referencing things like uh, nuclear bomb tests um, and that kind of thing, but we're trying to give it uh, a bit of a different look um, to sort of make up a, a bit of a physics of how the, the Death Star beam actually works. Um, you know, one the the, the idea I was uh, um, kind of using is what was driving for me the logic of it was that the uh, at this low power the the beam penetrates down into the planet I don't know twenty thirty miles and sort of dissipates all this energy down um, at that kind of depth and then. There's sort of a shock wave that erupts from that that sort of becomes this uh, uh, sort of surf wave of Earth turning over that's uh, spreading out, and that's what our heroes are trying to escape from. Um, so once we kind of had that, uh, the idea of the, um, it's like uh, dropping a rock into a pond uh, but has a sheet of ice over it, but the spreading waves kind of break crust plates that flip over um, you know, then it was deciding how big that is. Is the wave a mile tall? How fast is it moving? How slow can we get away with to sell the scale? And designing shots. There was no, there was no shortage of good ideas on the movie. Uh, you know, Gareth is a really smart guy, and he's very visual, and he's got really good ideas for shots. Uh, a lot of it became about running time and complexity of story. And you know, I think the first cut of the movie was uh, 
uh, three and a half hours. So, you know, we, the, all through post it was, what can we do to simplify, simplify, simplify? And, um, and there were some like, really good ideas in all parts of the movie that uh, ultimately, you know, we would have needed uh, more time than we had to, to tell. So they sort of got dropped out in an effort to streamline things. So it wasn't so much that, uh, that there were things that we couldn't do for technical or even budgetary reasons. It was more, um, you know, we're trying to tell a complex story and trying to fit it into the amount of time and, you know, make sure that things are always clear what's going on and who this guy is and who that guy is and why this character is doing that. Um, so some things I thought were really cool ideas but just couldn't fit in the movie, had to go. Some, one of the things I love about FMX is all of the creative ideas that are being um, thrown out at all the different panels about technique and about production. Um, and uh, I think it's always ener energizing to, to hear people's latest thoughts about you know, virtual production, about lighting and rendering, about all the things that, that get talked about here. Um, you always walk out of those sessions with, um, you know, wanting to go do something um, along those lines. So it's, it's energizing. It's energizing and it's exciting.